Hello. So I'm gonna show you some stretches that you can do for your neck and your upper shoulders and back. You're gonna need a ball. This is called the Miracle Ball Method. I got it online. It comes with a little booklet and some great stretches and two of these. And they're soft enough you can actually lie on them. You can put them underneath your spine without causing any problem. You don't want to do that with something like a, a tennis ball or, or something like a hard ball, like a ball hockey ball. This is a massage ball. I've got them in a larger size like this and a smaller size. You can find all kinds. My dog's ball is very much like this one. So sometimes you get at the dollar store or Dollarama, you just wanna make sure it's not too firm. If in doubt, just don't put it under your spine. So the things that we're doing, I'm gonna show you, you can lie on them and if that's too much pressure, you can use a wall. So I'll start with the wall. So I'm gonna take my ball and put it behind my back right here. So it's adjacent to my spine, between the shoulder blade and the spine is the best way I can describe it. And to increase the stretch, I can bring the same arm behind my back. So if I hold it there and then lean into the wall and roll up and down and pull my hair out. Move your head out of the way if it is. So basically all I'm doing is I'm leaning as much body weight as I want into the ball, squishing the knots. To increase the stretch, I bring my arm, the arm that's on the same side as that ball, behind my back. What that does is it moves my shoulder blade away so I can get into those nooks and crannies. So you can hear the weird noises the ball makes. So I can stay there. Make sure you breathe. When we hold our breath, we're holding the tension in our neck, right? So that's the opposite of what we wanna do. You wanna keep your neck relaxed. So you can roll all around there. If you're on top of the bone, like the shoulder blade, you might find that's uncomfortable. You know, just use your own common sense as to what's too much pressure and what's the quote, good pain. So that's one thing you can do, and you can also do that lying on the floor. I'll show you that after. Um, actually, I'll show you that now. I'm gonna take the computer and bring it closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm taking the ball, <clears throat> put it on my mat. You wanna make sure the, the surface that you're on is really important. If you're on a yoga mat or a towel, that's great. If, you're, if you do this on your bed, oh, I got no the ball. <laughs> if you do this on your bed, it's too, too much cushion and not enough resistance. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the ball there next to my shoulder blade. I'm going to, and then roll back on it. See what I'm doing? I have my arms on either side of my ears and my elbows are pointed up to the ceiling. That's a good one. So again, if it's too much pressure, uh, you can just not lean as much body weight on it. So what you can do is sort of lean back. You can come on and off of it. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this kind of stuff, but if you wanna be careful, um, I can send you the link to where I got my stuff. So now I'm gonna bring the ball for this one under the neck, I use a smooth one. You can also use a spiky one, but it might be too much at first. So I'm going to put my hood up. I'm going to put that ball underneath the curve in my neck. And I'm just showing you this for like a few seconds, but you can spend as much time as you like. So what I'm doing is I'm just relaxing. I'm breathing. I'm trying to release all the, my feet are on the floor and my knees are bent. So my low back is relaxed. I'm trying to just relax into this so that the pressure from the ball is giving me a little self massage underneath my skull. So it actually gives me a little traction, like a little gentle pull, but it feels good. So what I can do is I can slowly rotate side to side. 
You might hear cracks. That's just my neck. That's okay. And if, if you're holding, if it's too painful, you're not going to get a good stretch. You're going to do the opposite of what we're trying to do here. You can put on some nice music while you're doing this. I'm going to sit up now and show you a few stretches. Also, um, probably the most important thing we can all do for feeling tension in the neck and shoulders is stop watching the news so much because a lot of that is, is like when we're stressed out, we're holding our breath. And when we're holding our breath, our, our neck muscles get tighter. When our neck muscles get tighter, then we take shallow breathing. So we want to get away from all that negativity. So let's bring the palms up. Bring the left ear to the left shoulder. Nice breathing. So I'm going to take the opposite arm now and extend the wrist. So I'm stretching into these muscles here. If you feel numbness and tingling, that means we need to be doing this stretch more. It's okay. It's all right. So now what I'm going to do is rotate the wrist. I find a lot of tension and uh, pain in the wrists and, and forearms is because of neck issues and vice versa. When we're gripping very tightly, literally uh, with our hands, then that tension goes into the neck. So coming back to the middle, gentle stretch right ear to right shoulder. Extend the opposite arm, extend the wrist up, and rotate. And bring the hands down. And now I'm going to get you to fold your head forward, chin to chest. You don't want to push it or strain. And bring your head back to neutral. Now I'm just bringing the chin to the ceiling, opening my jaw here, opening the mouth, nice and wide, as long as you don't have any jaw pain, like a funny looking fish. We hold a lot of tension in here. So let's just very slowly rotate the head around. Don't forget about the upper shoulders because a lot of times pain into the neck is actually coming from the muscles in the shoulders. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite moves using a foam roller. And I do have a foam roller class. I'm going to change this so you can see a little bit better. So you want to make sure that you start the foam roller mid back. I start it right, right where my bra strap is. I lean back. Feet are on the floor. You never want to go into the low back with the foam roller because you've got floating ribs there. So that's too much pressure on those little ribs. They're only joined in one spot. They're not joined in the front as well. So they're not as strong. So again, hands behind the head. I'm bringing my elbows towards the ceiling. Now for a lot of people, this is about, this is as much as they can handle. I've been doing this for a long time. So it feels really good for me to lift my bum up and roll. My elbows are pointed towards the ceiling. It feels so great. You might hear a crack. Cracks are okay as long as you don't have any pain when the cracks happen. If I want to get deeper or higher up, I go up like this. So this is not meant to, to be a class. This is just like demonstrating some things you can try at home. I always recommend that you come to a class. And then you can take the foam roller this way. A lot of people, and so I have it right underneath my spine and I have my palms up and I'm just relaxing, focusing on the breathing. You want to lift your head up, gently bringing your head forward, using your arms, not your neck, and then rolling back down. So for some people, this is too much. Just lying like this is too much. They don't have the extension across the chest muscles. That's totally fine. What you can do is you can put um, maybe a pillow on top of the foam roller so that it's not as much of a deep stretch. You can also roll side to side. That feels really good. Okay. 
And remember the heating pad, 10, 15 minutes is not a bad thing either. But if you have a spasm, like it hurts, it really hurts, um, or it's like a sharp pain, you probably want to check in with me first because you don't want to heat something that's already inflamed. I hope that helps. Any questions, please let me know.